Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we're talking about three topics, overloading, removing the defender, and deflection. So the examples are going for, from simple to more complex. There's gonna be useful tips. So let's start with this one. All right, let's start with overloaded or overworked pieces. A piece that has too many jobs at the same time. And the geometry usually is going to be some kind of zigzag pattern. Or in this case, an L, but it can also be a zigzag. Knights are not very good at defending each other, especially when these are on our side of the board, as we can kick them out. So here we can just play f6. If this knight moves, we can just take this knight on the c file. And the same thing happens if this knight moves. Now we just take this pawn, and we're better with black. In this example, we get queen takes on b3, which is a blunder, because now we have this attack on the back rank. So we can give a check here. Okay, we defend with the rook. Now the problem is this rook is going to be overloaded. He cannot protect all of these squares as well as the back rank. And this queen is also misplaced. So even though he's defending this rook, it's only a, an illusion. So here we have a hard to see move, but we can play queen b2. So queen b2 looks very strange, but again, it is this rook is overloaded. So if the yeah if the queen takes the queen now this is checkmate so that cannot happen uh what happens yeah if they take the rook okay i just take this and this is gonna be checkmate anyway so the yeah the the only move that continues the game after queen b2 it can be h3 so now we take the queen and again this is just completely lost for white I like this example very much as it combines elements of attack and defense. So first, let's look at the alignment of the pieces. Our queens are looking at each other. And then this knight is defending this square on h2. If we can remove this knight, then we will be able to deliver checkmate. So how do we do that? You can pause the video now. Here you can attack this knight again. So if bishop takes, now we take this queen. Uh, the best move in the position is to take this queen. But now we can take with tempo. And then the king has to move. We get the knight. So yeah. It was the combined geometry of these two pieces. Uh, the battery of the knight and the bishop. The queen and the bishop. That is attacking this piece. And now uh, this cannot happen. Because it will be checkmate. Right. So. We can understand the geometry of overloaded pieces in two different ways. So first, from Black's perspective, we have an alignment of this rook to this queen. Okay, so there might be something there. Now, what are the overloaded pieces for Black, uh, for White? The, we have this queen. This queen is doing a defensive task, the most important, which is protecting the g2 pawn. It's also protecting this bishop and if we x-ray through this pawn, we also have a defensive task to this rook. So what is the mo best move in the position? Is to take this bishop. So if queen takes, this is mate. That cannot happen. If pawn takes, now we have an alignment of these two pieces and we can attack it. So it will be almost like a deflecting move. If queen takes, again, this is mate. So let's say that the queen moves somewhere, I don't know, here. Uh, we can even trade pieces and now we get this rook. So yeah, this is just winning for, for black. When we look for overloaded pieces, another clue we can look for is undefended pieces. For instance, this bishop is undefended. And what do we want with black? We want to deliver checkmate. And if we can remove this bishop from the defensive task of f1, is doing this is doing too many jobs right is doing is defending this square as well as this one so yeah here we can deliver a check on d1 with the rook once bishop takes uh, this is mating two uh, king moves and this is made that was fine and dandy how do we do that in the middle game that can also happen so here we have this battery of the rooks aligned to the queen 
and this bishop is overloaded. This bishop is doing the task of defending this knight and this pawn. So now we can take this knight and if bishop takes back, now we can take the pawn. Black didn't play that. Black actually took this with the pawn, weakening this pawn structure and the safety of the king, which is going to be useful later. How do we continue the attack with white? So we can play knight to e4, putting more pressure on this pawn. There's three pieces attacking it. So black is going to do something kind of smart, although it doesn't work. But just to show you how this concept applies to a lot of situations of the board. So the knight is attacking the queen and the pawn. And let's say I retreat, which is what actually happened. The bishop can take. And if I take, this pawn is gone. So my queen is, has too many responsibilities. So, okay, but it's fine because now this this is not really a place for a knight. So white is doing much better in this position. Okay, so now I can play knight d4. Just trying to give a fork here of the pieces. Now black plays a very annoying move knight b4, preventing me from doing this. It's okay, it's fine. I, I, can, I can start bringing my queen here, but white is going to do a winning move. It's going to make a winning move, which is knight to e6. So this pawn has too many responsibilities. It's covering these two squares. So it's, it's protecting the pawn on e6 and preventing me from giving a check. Now, yeah, once we take this pawn, we don't even take back. We can just give a check. Uh, king has to move, and this is just completely winning for, for white. Now you can start bringing your bishop and your your rook, and it's going to yes, just completely winning. Let's start with deflection or decoy, which is very similar to overloading. So in overloading, we saw that it's about exploring a piece in ability to handle multiple threats effectively. Now in deflection, you force a piece to abandon their job. So the difference is in that word, forcing. We have to make a forcing move to distract one piece from their defensive uh, job. So let's check out, out this example where we have equal material. We have five, uh, yeah, sorry, four versus four pieces. And the queen just move, uh, trying to trade queens. But we have something better instead of trading. If we look at the geometry of the board, this king is having too many responsibilities. So one square apart, that might be the geometry of of this puzzle. Now we can take here the rook uh, with the rook on e2. Once the king takes back, now we take uh, the knight. This is mating one. And if the knight goes, sorry, the king goes the other way. The king goes here. Uh, this is mating one all the same. For any kind of problem or in a position that we're trying to find the best move, the best thing is to look at the coordination of the pieces. So here, the queen and the bishop are protecting each other. And they, they look good. This this bishop also looks good, pointing at this, this knight and my queen. But now, uh, there is a disruption. We have to think about how can we disrupt this communication between these two pieces because I would love to give a check here on F3. I cannot do that because this bishop takes. But yeah, if I, I can just distract. I can just distract the queen from the defensive duty of these two pieces. So in this case, the queen is overloaded, right? It's protecting this bishop and the other bishop on D5. So yeah, here you can take this bishop with the rook now the best move in the position is to take yeah, you have to take uh, and now you can give a check here so this queen is now hanging once the bishop takes now this queen is hanging so yeah we have some alignment of the pieces as well we force this move to happen and we're also doing that distracting move we are distracting the the queen from defensive defending this bishop so now we have that other forcing move, which is check. And yeah, we can just take this queen. So feel free to pause the video on this one. It's black to play.
So looking at the position, we are down one piece. But in this case, there is an alignment here of the queen and the king. So what is in the middle? This bishop, right? And who is protecting the bishop? The queen. So if we can only distract the queen, uh, yeah, that will be the that will be the best move. If we can find a, a way to distract this queen, and now we can win this bishop, that will be the best move. So I hope you found bishop to g7. Bishop to g7 distracts the queen from the defensive task of the bishop. And now, yeah, this comes with check. Uh, let's say the, oh no, that, will, that wouldn't be the best move. Maybe the king goes here. Doesn't matter, we still take this knight. Uh, so I just checked with the computer and the best move is actually to play king c2 for black. Because the other move, if, I, if you go here, there is something like a mating 11. So yeah, the best move for white is actually to go here and then yeah, you keep giving checks with black and uh, so you can you go here and and possibly take this 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 pawn so everything is fine it's, it's still winning this is white to play and we have all the possibilities of the light squares with this queen and this bishop so i actually just point out the move uh, we can give a check we look for forcing moves first now the only move in the position is to retreat with the queen and, and now we want to distract the skin from the defense of the of the queen, right? So we can just give a check. Uh, we give off the bishop, but now we win the queen. So think about how we can disrupt the communication of the pieces. So in this case, we're playing with white. And we start by giving checks. We always look for checks first, forcing moves. Queen c4 is a skewer on the king and the queen. So... Uh, yeah, now the king has to move. Okay, he's still defending. So we have to distract. We need to distract this king from the defensive task of this queen. So we can go rook d7. Once this happens, we take this queen. Right. Remove the defender. So one of the things we want to do all the time when finding tactics is looking at loose pieces. So in this example, it's really simple. We can give a check here. This bishop is hanging. So knight tries to defend, but we have this knight on d5. So we can just take here and then we take this bishop. We have been doing this for a while now, looking for the alignment of the pieces. So this rook is defending the bishop, which at this time is attacking our queen. So first we look for forcing moves, which is a check. So here we can just simply take this rook. Once the king moves, we can take this bishop, right? So just gonna show you here perfect feel free to pause the video on this one it is white to play so we always going to look for the relationships of the pieces so in this case the queen and the two rooks protecting each other on the back rank the queen is protecting the bishop and at the same time the knight so there has to be a way to exploit this so yeah the move you want to go for is queen uh, rook takes on b8 once the queen takes now this knight is unprotected or undefended so you were removing the defender of this piece right in this case we always want to look for forcing exchanges so in this case we see also a geometrical pattern which is these two knights defending each other normally they don't do a very good job so here if you're thinking bishop takes on c6 that is the right move because now uh, the knight has to take, so you take this queen, and yes, it's completely lost for, for black. So you can take your time on this one, it is white to play. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to think. The first thing I would look for is, what is wrong with the position? What is wrong with black's pieces? Just intuitively, I would say, okay, these four pieces on the seven rank, that are not even that are occupying this rank but are not actually protecting it so here we have a move which is bishop to g6 uh, bishop is uh, bishop cannot be taken this is checkmate so now the only move that continues the game because we're targeting this square right the f7 square so knight is protecting uh, this square now so the only task we have to do is remove the defender of this square 
So that's simple. We now we can take with the rook. Once bishop takes, uh, this is checkmate. In this one, it is white to play and to win. So we're actually down a pawn, and this uh, the queen is on the fire. So we have to move the queen somewhere. Fortunately, there is a pin here, so knight cannot take on d6. The alternative, I can show you what is the alternative. So if we give a check and the queen takes, now we're going to push this pawn to promotion. Uh, best move for black is going to be rook, G, uh, rook g7. So, but yeah, we can just start bringing the knight and, and give a check. Also promoting this pawn. So this is winning for white. Oh, but wait, what if I protect this pawn? Uh, I can still take this pawn. And if rook takes, now I am about to promote and, and queen. So yeah, that's not that's not really a, a move. Uh, so what is the next move? Best move for black? King f7. King f7. Now we want to identify what is the best defender of the position. Very powerful defender is going to be the knight. Right? It's attacking our queen now. This can happen. So we have to remove it. And then once this happens... Uh, the queen is lost. The queen is is, not, is hanging. So the queen is going to take our queen. Once we take back, the king has to take the rook. So the rook takes. We take the rook. And now this is winning. So even if this happens, let's say the king goes here. We have an extra piece. Yes. A, a lot of material for, for white. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Join my Patreon for only $5. I have exclusive content there. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.